Now if you want something besides just the plain white as the background color for the body of the message, well come up here and click on options and let's go to the themes group to page color and you can see in the pop-up add a splash of color to your document. All right, go ahead and click on the drop down arrow and let's find that splash. That's orange accent to lighter 60%. Click on it and it adds it. Of course, you can come back, click on page color and go back to no color, but eh, let's do something a bit more special. Like let's do some fill effects, click on it. And on the gradient tab, let's choose two colors. So it goes from one color to the next. And for the second color, let me click on the drop down arrow and choose this one right here. Gold accent for lighter 60%. Select that. And ooh, look at the shading styles for horizontal. Going from a peach to a gold or a gold to a peach or peach, gold, peach. Or you can do it vertically or let's do diagonal up. And for the four variants that are available for diagonal up, I'll choose the first one from peach diagonally to the gold. Select it. Click okie dokie. And Oh, that's kind of fun. Nice Easter colors. Next, if you want to insert a picture into the body of the message, not as an attachment, then come up here, click on the Insert tab, go to the Illustrations group, and click on Picture Pictures. And let's browse for it. It's on the desktop in my Exercises folder. Double click. And there they are. Double click and, ooh, it's full size. That's huge. Let's go ahead and choose like one of a couple of options to resize this picture. I can either hover over one of the circles there, the resizing handles for the picture, either in the upper left-hand corner or the top middle, or if you want to scroll over right-hand side, middle right-hand side, or bottom corner. In any case, when you hover over it, you get arrows pointing in opposite directions. You can click and drag to push it in, and that looks a little bit more manageable here. Or you can do it from the right middle resizing handle, but if you do that, these guys are going to get squished. Ah! Let's go ahead and hit undo. Which, by the way, if you ever get into a situation where you make a lot of changes here to the image and you want to go back to the way it was, the default, when you first inserted it, you can come up here with the picture selected and go to the related contextual format tab because when you click off, it disappears. When you select the image, it reappears because that tab is proprietary to what you have selected here, which is the image. That is these commands on this related contextual format tab. So in the adjust group, you can go ahead and click on the drop down arrow to reset picture, or you can, well, if you made a lot of changes to it, including the size, you want to go back to the way it was, click on it, and whoa, we're back. Now you can do it that way when it comes to resizing it, or and let's come back up here on the Format tab to the Size group instead of, you know, scrolling to or coming up here to click and drag to resize it. You can do it numerically. So if you want it to be, well, there's the width and there's the height. If you want it to be 3 inches, just go ahead and type in 3. And it's going to keep the aspect ratio locked or the picture in proportion. So even though I'm shrinking up the width, it'll also do it in proportion to the height. So when I hit Enter, you see how it readjusts the height to keep it in proportion so the width isn't shrunk and vertically it's still really tall. And you can make the changes to that if you'd like by coming up here in the size group and click its expandable dialog box button. And it's that guy right there, lock aspect ratio. Now I go over this when it comes to cropping, resizing your images and rotating them and flipping them and all that in my Word and PowerPoint training videos. Outlook is just to send and receive email messages, but I want to give you enough because you do do some word processing within the body of the message and also, you know, inserting images and so on. But again, as I mentioned in an earlier training video, Outlook will use elements of PowerPoint, also Microsoft Word, and instead of re-recording all the same things over again, you can go ahead and watch my word training videos and or PowerPoint because PowerPoint is an image-based presentation program and Word is, well, the word processing program. So to get more details, go ahead and watch that. Otherwise, I'll keep it simple here. And you got the reset button here. If you want to go back to the way it was, click on reset and well, everything changes. Click okie dokie and ah, oh, we're back. Well, I'm going to go back to three inches. So quickly type in three in the width, hit enter, and there we go. Now with it right here, if I want to click and drag it and move it up before this paragraph, it doesn't look really good, does it? Unless I want to come in here and hit enter a couple of times to push it below. You can do that, or let me hit undo a couple of times. You can, with it selected, come over here 
and click on the layout options. Click on it, and I cover this extensively in my Microsoft Word training videos. This is just enough to get you going or enough to work with so you're not completely stuck. And you can see down below that it's going to keep it in line with text. But you got some wrapping options. Yo, yo, yo. Let's go ahead and wrap it with the text. And you can see you got a shape within the lines. That shape looks like a horseshoe. So you can have the image in line with the other lines there or the text, the paragraph. You can have it tight so the text, when you move the image, is right up next to the image. Or you can have it through it where it goes right through the image or just on the top and bottom of the image. I can just go ahead and play with it and again watch my word training videos. Behind, let's do in front of the text. That way when you click and drag, well, it's in front of the text, but you got freedom to actually move it around anywhere within the body of the message. And I like that. And then click off. Now if you have a lot of pictures within your email message, just a ton of them because you're sending your entire photo album of your trip, you know, one picture below after another, well, that's going to be probably a large email. And so what you can do is you can compress the pictures. To do that, go ahead and select at least one of the pictures and then come up here to the Format tab. Go to the Adjust group, and you're looking at that button right there, Compress Pictures. Click on it, and in the window, you can have compression applied to only the picture that you have selected, but if you want to apply it to all the pictures in the body of your message, then uncheck it. And then delete cropped areas of the picture. We haven't talked about cropping, but again, when it comes to formatting, working with pictures in greater detail, there's PowerPoint. You can watch my training videos on that in Microsoft Word. But what it does is that when you cut off a part of the picture that you can't see, it still keeps that cutoff part behind the scenes in case if you want to bring it back. But if you cropped a lot of pictures, there's no sense, if you're not going to be showing them, to keep them. So it'll actually delete those cropped areas of the pictures permanently if you leave that check. You know, to save on size when it comes to an email message with a lot of images. And then down below the resolution, well, I don't get high fidelity. I get the HD option, 330 pixels per inch, which is good quality for high definition displays. Or you can do print if you're sending this off to somebody. It doesn't need to be high def, just that they do want to print it off. Or if it's for the web, where they can go ahead and take these and load them up on the web pages or show up on the wall through a projector. Or the least of which is just for email viewing, 96 pixels per inch, minimized document size for sharing. If I select that, click OK, you'll see, uh, I can kind of see it there, some degradation, or it's kind of fuzzy, but it reduces the size of the picture and all the other pictures that if I had more in the body of the message. And if you don't like that, you're like, oh, that's horrifying. Well, you can go ahead and undo it, or click on the compressed pictures again and say, mm, let's go HD. And then, well, you can use the default resolution, which is what it came with which if it's a higher resolution than the HD, well, that's the way to go. So choose your flavor. I'll use default, click OK, and that means that I'm not scaling back on the size or the quality of the image to reduce the size of the image and hence overall the email message here. One last thing I want to go over is up here on the Insert tab in the Illustrations group is taking a snapshot or a screenshot of the window that's open up on your desktop and inserting it into your document here or the body of the message. Let me click off. Let me hit enter a couple of times. So when I come up here and click on screenshot, the available windows that are open, you can actually take a snapshot of that window. So I have my Word document that, that's opened. You can see down below that's opened on another screen. I've got two screens open. And then I've got my actual Outlook program that's opened. Well, you got the message, but behind that, I have the program. Now, if I minimize that down to the taskbar, and I come back up here and click on Screenshot, I only get one. So keep that in mind. You can have a lot of windows open or programs, but if they're minimized, then when it comes to taking a snapshot of that entire window, it won't see it until you go ahead and click on the corresponding button to restore it. And let's go back to the email message here and then click on Screenshot. Hey, now it's back. So I can go ahead and simply select it, and there's the snapshot. And because this guy right here has the text wrapping of being in front, it's actually over the screenshot of my Outlook program here, the inbox and stuff. In any case, you can go ahead and select that image and then, well, resize it and do the same thing that we did to this. Let me go ahead and hit Undo. You can do that or what are the other options? Click on Insert, click on Screenshot. 
If you just want a clipping of it and not the entire screen, then go ahead and click on Screen Clipping. But before I do that, if I have a lot of windows that are open, let me do this, let me minimize that down to the taskbar. I got this one, let me minimize that. Let me open up the Exercises folder, and let's open up an image here, and let's restore that down so I have the image, the folder, the Outlook program, and then my email message here. So when I come back up here on Insert, Screenshot, and I just want a clipping of maybe this guy's face right here, or maybe just part of the email program that I have open. In any case, when I click on Screen Clipping, I only get one choice. Now let me show you this before we go ahead and decide how we can actually choose another window to clip and not the one that's, well, that we're looking at now. So if I just click and drag the black cross, it puts this mug right there. I mean, isn't that cool? But what if I didn't want that? What if I actually wanted this right here? My Outlook program, and I just wanted a screen clipping of the files that are contained in the WinZip file. How do I do that? Well, here's the secret. The last window that you touch prior to going back to doing a screen clipping is going to be the one that's available that's going to be on top. So since I touched the Outlook program, let's go ahead and with it selected, hit the Delete key. When I come back up here to the Insert tab and go to the Illustrations to Screenshot, and I do a screen clipping, I last touched the Outlook program, so that's going to be on top. Besides all the other windows I have, like the Exercises folder, and I'm like, oh, I wanted to do a screenshot of what was in my Exercises folder. Well, to get out of this, you can hit the Escape key, and then just touch it. So that's the last thing you touched. Then come back to your email message. Again, Insert, Illustrations, Screenshot, Screen Clipping, and there you go. Wait for it. Then it turns to a milky white to let you know you're in clipping mode, and then go ahead with the black cross, click and drag that part of the window that you want to clip, and there you go, it's clipped. Oh, isn't that fun? And then click on the drop down arrow, let's do in front of text so I can move it around and put it right there. And as a reminder, like I said, I don't want to beat this into you, but when it comes to doing a lot of word processing, images, clipping, videos, audio, all that, I'm showing you the basics of how you can attach it to your emails to send them off, but when you want to do something getting as fancy as this and rotating them, clicking and dragging and going this way, whoa, we're in a battle for our lives here, then you want to watch my word training video on inserting and modifying and editing pictures as well as PowerPoint, or watch them both. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.